as an international organization, has been working in various countries in the Asia-Pacific region, bringing institutions together to harness the synergy and to take advantage of the expertise available elsewhere in countries where they are most needed. Given this experience and background of the two organizations, their association in this context is quite significant. Today's webinar on tissue culture in banana, root and tuber crops is the first in the series of four webinars, as I understand. This webinar will highlight the potential of tissue culture technology as well as the challenges and opportunities for industry to take full advantage of this technology in order to realize its potential for sustainable agricultural production. I do hope that this webinar will be of great use for all the stakeholders, including industry, research institutions, academia, and all those who are participating from different countries. I'm sure fruitful and productive deliberations would enrich every one of them who are participating. It will help formulation of short-term and long-term strategies to take full advantage of this technology in Asia Pacific and African countries. I congratulate Dr. Ravi, Dr. Rishi and the APARI team as well as Dr. Shivkan Shukla and his team from BCIL for this new initiative. My best wishes for success of this webinar series. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this series. Thank you, Honorable Reji, sir, for this kind word. In fact, we fear that he is physically present while speaking with us. In fact, yesterday he was busy minute to minute because of the two days event. But he spent a lot of time understanding what Apari is doing, what BCL is doing, and I was frequently asking after this webinar what we are going to do. Because this webinar should, should pave the way for the next level of operation. Just like uh, coming virtually, talking something, and then not pursuing anything will not help. So that we should have some kind of short-term and long-term program after this webinar. That is our objective. In India, we have the strength of more than 200 companies. We have strength of knowledge pool, resources. And when we, as a BCL, combine with APARI, that I think we can have kind of long-term sustainable program for the ultimate benefit of the farmer of the globe. So with this word, now I think we can move for the next level of the program, for the technical session from the research institution. And to start with, uh, I'll invite Dr. R. Silvi Rajan, principal scientist from NRC Banana, Trichy, and he will talk about journey of plant culture with banana perspective from research to commercialization. So Dr. Silvi Rajan, is over to you. Good morning and uh, happy to see Dr. Ravi Ketarpal, Dr. Rishik uh, Tyagi Sir, and Dr. Sikhan Sukla, and all those panelists here. I am going to talk uh, about uh, the journey from research to commercialization uh, from uh, part of uh, academia point of view and uh, the significance, best quality practices on the way forward, which I am going to tell about. And all of you know the banana and plantains are very important staple. Uh, it's grown in 
140 countries uh, with an annual production of 155 million tons from 11 million hectares. And uh, it's a livelihood source for uh, 400 million people, uh, especially uh, the resource uh, poor farmers uh, living uh, in the uh, least developed countries as well as developing countries. And uh, India is the largest uh, producer of banana. And you might be knowing that uh, this increase and the largest which we could get this state uh, only because of physical search, banana adoption. And just to show here, 2005, we were producing 18.59 million tons and it is increased to 83.73. Show those. Hello, could you see the slides? No, Dr. Silvera's slide is not shared. One minute, yeah, sorry. I, I thought you are in preamble of the slide. Oh, one minute, okay. Oh. Now, could you see? Yes, it started. Okay. Sorry. I think I had to make this slide so, no? Yes. Some problem in this, I think. Yeah. Okay, now? Perfectly fine. Okay. So, I am going to talk about uh, the significance, best quality practices, and the way forward. And uh, from uh, National Research Center for Banana, yes. as I was telling, that uh, we produce 33.73 uh, 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 million uh, tons of banana uh, now, as of now. And uh, we have increased almost 80% uh, 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 in the production. And of course, we uh, consume a lot domestically. And we recently, we export around 1% uh, of what we produce is being exported from India. And I would say what we produce uh, is uh, uh, can feed 65 gram of banana. Every day, we can feed to our uh, individual, every citizen in India. So if you want to increase to one banana per head in India, then we have to almost uh, slightly double our production in the coming years. And you can see I have split this particular graph uh, into two. Uh, one is pre uh, tissuculture adoption, there is still uh, 1991. And uh, the post uh, tissuculture uh, adoption zone, the graph you can see that the uh, area has not drastically increased, but the production and the productivity has increased a lot. And from 20 uh, tons per hectare, it has increased to 36 uh, uh, tons per hectare. Uh, uh, this is the growth with what we are seeing. And uh, yes, everyone knows disagriculture is very important. Um, and India, if you look at the growth, uh, in 1987 or uh, late 80s, uh, A.B. Thomas uh, company, they started disagriculture uh, company, then followed by Indo-American hybrid seeds, Hindustan liver and unicorn biotech, like that, uh, including Jane irrigation system in 1995. Around 15 tissue culture companies started uh, in uh, late 80s and 90s um, uh, to supply the tissue culture plants. And of course, the uh, work of Dr. Duraisamy from Indian Institute of Horticulture, Bengaluru, and again the work uh, from National Chemical Laboratory, uh, uh, Pune. Uh, on tissue culture, banana has encouraged many players to enter into this uh, tissue culture business. Many firms entered uh, into this uh, because of the advantage. And all, all you know that uh, 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 there are two important problems. See, when there were many litigations started in 90s uh, with the company and farmers because of two important problems. That was variations in the tissue culture plants. It went up to 25%. Even I have visited many fields uh, uh, receiving the complaints from the farmers that some uh, uh, variation up to 25 percent has been seen in those uh, 90s. And again, why is this is problem? These two were the only problem in tissue culture. And uh, yeah, it's not moving. Yeah, and if you see uh, the virus uh, problem, you can see a farmer in Jalgaon uh, because of Kukumar uh, Bosek uh, virus attack. Uh, he is uprooting all those infected plants. And uh, a few years back, around 40 lakhs plants were uprooted uh, both in uh, Maharashtra as well as uh, Madhya Pradesh because of Kukumar mosaic virus. Um, uh, this is because of uh, uh, the 
the, the, there are companies who are not testing also. So this has led to this uh, spread of this uh, viral diseases. And in 2009 and 10, we estimated uh, because of this banana banchito virus, uh, emergence in the Maharashtra and as well as Andhra Pradesh and the part of Tamil Nadu, around the 50 million dollar loss in that year itself be estimated based on our survey and uh, the loss and other thing. And uh, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, uh, you know, one company uh, actually they started, they run five years almost because of uh, uh, this Banana Banchita virus uh, came at the end of the uh, growing season, like the seventh or eighth month. All farmers got frustrated almost uh, around uh, four lakh plants of that uh, supplied by the company has been infected with Banchita. And again, this was not uh, under uh, uh, in testing uh, regime or this particular uh, thing. They have closed, the company has to be closed because of uh, this problem. And you know that uh, somogran variations are very, very serious those days. And the companies has put more effort to reduce this uh, 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 the variations uh, during the uh, primary gardening time. They could able to call out those plants which are, which are all uh, uh, very, uh, varied from the original plants. So genetic fidelity testing in which visual way of also one can detect the variants and remove during the primary gardening. And now uh, the molecular uh, approach of uh, using markers to detect the variants are being uh, put under use under the NCS TCP. And you can see here in the right uh, what I am showing to one of the scientists. This looks like a bunch of but when we test it, it's not a bunch of It's one of the somogran variants of cultivar Papul. So there are a lot of somogran variants and which is coming because of more number of subcultures and the high quantity of the, uh, this uh, hormonal imbalance and again uh, media composition, stress and duration. There are many reasons uh, this comes and the company has put their own wisdom to reduce as well as we have also given them how to remove those uh, uh, variants in this one. And because these two problems, uh, the national certification system uh, came into existence in India and for which uh, the government of India has brought the Tissuculture Raised Plants under Seeds Act uh, in March uh, 2006, it's appeared in the Gazette's notification. And uh, the certificate agents were DBT. And in fact, the BCIL is the one who uh, totally look after uh, this uh, NCS TCP system. And whatever the growth which you are seeing, it's only uh, the, the, the contribution of the entire team of BCIL. And uh, of course, they were uh, taking the help from the referral laboratories, accredited test laboratories, and of course, for the companies, the organized companies, and all together, and this uh, successful NCS TCP has brought, uh, brought a big change in uh, uh, banana uh, in India, actually. So now, um, you know, just in 2007, when it was started, only 11 tissue companies, they recognized, and it's increased to 100 in 2015. And the same number almost, it is being uh, recognized by the uh, NCS TCP and uh, these all companies spread over across the country where banana is grown uh, virtually more like you know in Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat where the almost 90% of the area is covered with tissue banana, a more number of companies are uh, there in the places. And uh, um, as I said, the problems of virus as well as homoclonal variants are the major. The National Research Center for Banana, we took an initiative to uh, clone the viral code put in genes of four important virus genes. I don't want to talk about the importance of those viruses, but uh, Banchita, Black Mosaic, Cucumber Mosaic, and uh, Banana Stick, Mysore virus, for which we cloned the viral code protein and expressed in the bacterial system, and we raised the polyclonal antibodies as well as recently monoclonal antibodies uh, for all those four viruses and we developed using these resources. We have developed uh, 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 serology is this uh, dog Elisa kit, ready to use kit. And if you take this kit, you can use, you can do everything uh, in testing in the laboratory, including the Elisa plates also we used to give along with this uh, kit. They recently, what we introduced is a TOS Elisa kit, triple antibody sandwich Elisa kit, wherein we have used uh, uh, monoclonal antibody also along with the polyclonal antibody. And this has been commercialized uh, to all the people around the 10, um, players they, they used to regularly buy and use for testing. In addition, we also do. And uh, in addition to ELISA based kit, we have also developed novel techniques like real time PCR. You know, SARS CoV 2 normally they use 
only real time PCR with two targets. Similar approach also should be applied here in coming days um, uh, because to ensure that uh, freedom from virus. And LAMP and lateral flow immunosity and RPA based methods we have in our store. We, anytime we can deploy for the uh, testing. And you can see here our uh, vulnerable director general also here and uh, its ministers uh, releasing the on site detection kit of uh, developed by NRC Banana, that's a district kit. We are developed for banana bracket mosaic virus and cucumber mosaic virus, and which are being used for uh, in germ plasm level at present. We are using and it can be used later. And here we have also tested, and if you see it, our uh, it's accredited test laboratory under NCS TCP. Uh, we have uh, tested for viruses and gentility for many Cavendish line. Almost 95% of the lines are Cavendish line grand line. And non-Cavendish desert types also group of C, Sabri Banana, Rastali, Poovan, Kanthali, and Karpuravali Udayam, the first released variety from NRC Banana, and Red Banana, Cooking Banana, and Dasbest Plantain. So there are more than 20 banana varieties uh, which we, under NCS TCP, we tested. And at NRC Banana, we tested around 2 lakh samples of mother culture as well as physical rice and plants. And we certified 296 million physical uh, plants and you can see this uh, graph here in 2013 14 30 million and uh, and it increased like this and before 2007 onwards we were testing up to 2013 uh, ncs tcv were not, not receiving the certificate but that time also we tested one lakh samples and put together i would say around 600 million plants we are certified from nrc banana alone and of course you can see the big figures here that is uh, ncs tcp figure very quite good number of uh, samples have been tested and certified, not only banana, but also other crops by BCAL. On coming to the impact of uh, NRC banana, and as I said, around um, 50 lakh plants have been disapproved because of presence of virus and uh, uh, it's not true to type. Uh, 50 lakh plants which is carrying the virus has been stopped from the laboratory to uh, the farmer's field. That is it's a great thing that NCS TCP has done uh, with the help of ATLs. 50 lakh plants of virus infected had it been deployed in the farm and it would have increased through the aphid spread in a very big level. And the cucumber mosaic virus, what we did, uh, we, uh, we did a rigorous testing and now it is reduced at a very less level there in uh, Jalgaon and uh, Burganpur area. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the incidence has come down, the uh, results shows that the variations also has come down. And uh, in addition to that name, we have rejuvenated the GI tagged hill banana group of shape. And uh, around six lakhs plants has been supplied through NCS TCP through companies. And we supplied around 10,000 mother plants to the tissue companies directly from our laboratory. Similarly, for Poon also we did. And for this the Genome Savior Award, Plant Genome Savior Award, this hill banana group of shape received because of our intervention because otherwise due to Banchita, this virus would have been become extinct. And uh, coming to the list of technologies which we have transferred and recently next generation sequence, uh, next generation difficult system, we have transferred to Mrs. Innova Agri Biotech uh, for Limited. This is the uh, using embryogenic cell suspension. And we have also Sabri Baron is very important in Tripura. For them, we have transferred technology to Tripura Biotechnology Council. Again, for Dendran Barana, this is the technology we transfer to Kota in Kerala. And virus indexing technology we transfer to Biotechnology Central Government of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, like that, we, test, uh, we transferred many of our tissue culture technologies to many tissue culture companies. And in fact, we, we, uh, we, we, we have given mother culture also, we are supplied to many tissue culture companies. And regularly, we are supplying Udayam and the brand name and Naipu one. We are regularly supplied to the many tissue culture company. Virus direction kits also we are selling to the many private uh, as well as uh, tissue culture laboratories of state agricultural universities. And we conducted as a capacity building that uh, Ravi Ketapal sir was telling that we did the, the capacity building for the African nations. Ten African nations we trained on virus indexing and the quality aspects uh, at our NRC Barana with the help of um, the funding from Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India. Uh, this is what you see here. And you know that we need a lot of digital plants, you know. Now, uh, actually, we need is 1,200 million plants annually. But our production is only 300 to 350 million plants. But the gap is 850 to 900 million plants. Still, we had to produce 
of course not for grandine alone but also indigenous uh, important cultivars like rastali nendran puvan nendran there are many good uh, cultivars location specific cultivars are there and for which we developed an embryogenic cell suspension technology uh, 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 in which we take the uh, immature main flower uh, hand and we initiate uh, uh, the cell suspensions once you did the cell suspension frable callus with somatic embryos you can see here and from this we developed embryogenic cell suspension this suspensions can be multiplied in a uh, in a shaker for long time and uh, it can be uh, germinated the embryos can be germinated in a uh, maturation media then germination media then fruit development media and root uh, the plant will be ready for hardening and this is a but uh, little bit cumbersome so what we did is we developed a bio reactor uh, dr uma our director and her team they developed a a uh, bio reactor uh, where in which uh, the bubble column balloon type bio reactor is a uh, best compared to many uh, three different bio reactor we tested in here a 2 ml of initial uh, settled cell volume ecs can be multiplied to 108 ml per liter within 20 21 days so you see 1 ml it can give you 4000 plants minimum 40000 maximum so uh, 100 ml it can give you 4 lakhs plants so uh, you can you can multiply the ecs within 21 days to produce uh, uh, a four lakh plants uh, in uh, in, a, in in one liter uh, in one uh, one of eight ml so again uh, yeah as i said not only for grand name but also rastali nendran for different varieties we have done this nendran rastali and red banana uh, through suitable culture the cost of the tissue plants are about 25 rupees but once you use this particular technology the cost can bring down to as yes, that of grand name so this is the uh, bio reactor system which developed at nrc banana the somatic embryo regeneration vessel this we have patented um, uh, this design and the process we have patented and here each vessel can produce 500 to 600 plantlets and you can have an 18 uh, vessels in a rack and this 18 vessels in a rack and in a room 10 such racks can be kept and you can produce 3 lakhs plants in a year Uh, in a room of uh, 10 by 10 so this is the technology which uh, in the offing to produce more plants and uh, not only grand name but also red banana nai puvan and sabri uh, these varieties also we have developed the ecs based thing and here you can see the red banana uh, which is being multiplied using the uh, our uh, technology of uh, uh, this in, in this uh, bioreactor vessel and uh, in fact we have tested these plants in the farmers field also the ecs derived plants of grand name and as well as uh, rastali not only the first crop but also the ratun crop and we got less than 2% variant and this happens even fruit tip derived plants also to less than 2% variant so it is per outperformed even tissue uh, and sucker derived uh, plants so this technique can be adopted another important technique is a uh, temporary immersion bio reactor temporary immersion bioreactor is here uh, we use just G, g2 or g3 stage of multiple uh, stage uh, culture we use and uh, uh, it's a suit tip culture it is not ecs based it's a suit tip culture in the multiplication stage you can uh, take uh, take to this uh, uh, this bioreactor vessel and you can produce 1500 uh, suits in the sixth subculture itself and it is 2.7 fold higher than the semi solid uh, Uh, culture method we need not use too much of media and the media requirement here is only 2 ml per plantlet and each vessel can hold around 150 to 250 plants so any tissue culture companies also can adopt uh, even for uh, the suit tip culture uh, this bioreactor can be adopted and our uh, dr uma has uh, proposed a thing using embryogenic cell suspension based uh, system we can have mother uh, we can have a central bioreactor facilities or uh, in the few uh, all the regions like north east and uh, north eastern region and uh, west and so and um, uh, this ecs can be supplied to the uh, different companies uh, under uh, recognized tissue companies and they can multiply and they can supply through this one and here the cost of virus releasing gentility goes down because uh, we initially in the uh, expands are being tested for its gentility of course virus indexing of course gentility should be tested uh, during the primary hardening time and uh, uh, the way forward and uh, tissue culture system uh, what i would say is that 
adoption of uh, embryogenic cell systems and delayed next generation system and the centralized banana mother stock culture for all the varieties as proposed by bcil uh, recently and it's a very good initiative if they bring uh, this one uh, it would be very nice to know that the mother culture of banana can be supplied to all the 200 district companies in india and the adoption of highly sensitive real time pcr technology for virus indexing though it is costlier but when we do when we do for mother stock culture it, the cost can be reduced uh, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, some manipulations and uh, it will be very sensitive and we can uh, pick out uh, it's a 100 times sensitive than the elisa so uh, then again bringing i don't know this is a macro propagated convention sectors are not coming under uh, certification but uh, like uh, uh, in india uh, this uh, national horticulture board they have got a a uh, nursery uh, act system wherein they uh, give lot of uh, the protocol to certify for the sectors also that has to be given importance also then crop based institutes should act as a referral laboratories and more number of atls in certification uh, system should be inducted so that uh, this can go in a big way and uh, uh, i am happy to say that we have published with apari uh, alia uh, macro propagation of production quality banana plant material this is first version and there is a recent version by sikla and dr baranwal i think so but this has been cited by more than 200 or uh, more and we published uh, this guide on handling and hardening of tissue banas wherein which we have given uh, uh, how to see the phenotypic difference in the variability and so much variation and many tissue culture companies they uh, they used to uh, refer these books uh, for their uh, ensuring a uh, variant free tissue plants and uh, i thank you uh, for giving this opportunity i thank uh, and this is the team that uma and her team for uh, who developed this bioreactor uh, uh, technology and uh, i thank icar and dbt and uh, uh, bcil uh, because they were with us uh, as an atl and dbt bayrak and also apari uh, for uh, uh, for joining us thank you very much i think with this thank you dr silvi rajan for this nice presentation very good to note that since you are the pioneer researcher but you had deep insight about the commercial disclosure aspect and uh, i keep on getting lots of appreciation for you from the companies this good thing you. and uh, you have covered many aspect of the commercialization of banana and the innovative technology this is very important to have new new technologies to support the uh, uh, disclosure sector and the farming system because it is a very labor intensive in the uh, mostly affair doing plant disclosure when such innovation will come definitely is going to help so thank you again thank you uh, now after dr silvi rajan i invite dr solomon solomon Alufemi from the Sweet Potato Breeding Program, National Research Crop Research Institute, Nigeria, and he has good experience in research as well as scaling up of tissue culture regarding potato, sweet potato, cassava. So it would be nice to hear from you from the African perspective how this technology is helping farmers. So, Dr. Solomon. Over to you. Hi. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I firstly want to apologize because I will be presenting from a different equipment, uh, which makes um, my background not to be like yours. Uh, please uh, pardon, pardon me. And um, thank you very much. I want to start by. saying that nigeria's um, application of tissue culture uh, can, can you hear me very well yes we could hear okay nigeria's application of tissue culture is not as um, as advanced as uh, uh, that of india and so we still have a lot of uh, catching up to do uh be that as it may Uh, I wish to quickly present the few slides I have here. Ah, uh, can you see my slides, please? 
No, it has not come so far. Oh, okay. Just, just, just a little. Uh, it should, it should come now. Okay. Can you see it? No. Uh, should we share this from our end? Um. Or you just get the share option in the bottom of your screen. Just click that and yeah. the file. Exactly what I'm doing here. Mm. No. Okay. Just just a moment. Let, let me let me let me put it through. Uh, now you wanna Uh, is it coming through now? Is it coming through? Can you, can, can you see? Okay, I can still see. Okay, maybe maybe we would like to, to share the one I have with you. I think it, it, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we'll share it from our end. Just a moment. Yes, it is going the right direction. I think now you're able to share that. You'll have better control if you'll share from your end. Uh, Started. Okay. It is started right. Okay, thank Just you. Just make it slice spread some more. Just leave it. Just start it now. Oh, great. So, can you can you can you see it now? Yes, yes, it is there. Okay. So just little outline of um, what I'll be talking about, uh, the plant techniques that have been employed at the National Root Crops Research Institute uh, in Nigeria, and the specific examples of tissue culture application in root and tuber crops, and present challenges that are limiting the full potential and the way forward. I uh, just to start with at uh, the National Root Crops Research Institute, Omudike, Nigeria, it's actually located in the rainforest belt of the Southeast, and it's a national research institute. And we are into genetic improvement, production, processing, storage, utilization, socioeconomics of uh, root and tuber crops. And then the crops we actually work on include cassava, yam, cocoa yam, sweet potato, Irish potato, ginger, risda, and so many other crops. And then um, in our little uh, uh, way, because we still have a long way to go, not like uh, India. And that's why we need to actually have a way of tapping from the wealth of experience of um, uh, India when it comes to strategic culture approach. Uh, the, where we've concentrated a lot on has to do with genetic conservation of um, root and tuber crops, disease pathogen elimination, and production of uh, disease-free planting materials and seed uh, germplasm exchange. Um, and, and the techniques we've applied are largely in vitro culture for genetic conservation, meristem tissue culture, and then the use of ELISA kit you know, for pathogen elimination, and then micro uh, production of disease-free planting materials 
after cleaning your materials, then we, 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 we do micropropagation. We use semi-autotrophic hydroponics. We also use um, aeroponics, not hydroponics, aeroponics. And then, um, yeah. And basically the crops, we have been able to start some of these uh, techniques on include um, cassava, yam, cocoa yam, sweet potato, Irish potato, ginger, and turmeric. We're still working on Rizga and our local potato that we call Hausa potato and sugar beet. And um, the picture you see um, on your right there is uh, three, uh, um, uh, that's our, our plant um, tissue culture lab growth room. And the crops that we have in conservation, there are just about uh, six of them. And so we've used nodal cotton and meristem uh, tip for uh, all of them. And this is, um, uh, these are some of the figures uh, that we have. And, and for cassava, the, 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 various, um, the various plant uh, tissue culture activities that we've involved in cassava specifically include the in vitro conservation, micropropagation, virus cleaning using meristem culture, which is followed up with, um, uh, um, with uh, PCR for, for, for cassava mosaic virus disease, and also uh, multiplication of clean materials using SAH, that's a neototrophic hydroponics. And in yam, it's just the same. Uh, in vitro conservation, micropropagation, elimination of um, viruses, and, um, and aeroponics. And uh, for sweet potato, we just are uh, testing our SAH um, method on that. Uh, but when you look at ginger turmeric potato, uh, we still have uh, some ways to go, but especially potato, we have to create, um, take potato to um, an environment, uh, which is um, uh, in the middle belt of Nigeria, where the uh, elevation is very high and we have a um, temperate climate, and that is where potato is actually produced. So um, presently, the federal government is setting up that area, and they have uh, tissue culture facilities that are waiting to be optimized. Now, quickly, I only have 10 minutes. Uh, so commercial root and tuber seed system. Uh, we all know that um, farmers, uh, for farmers to have increased yield, they need high quality seeds. And so um, few companies, seed companies exist in Nigeria. And these companies largely focus on cereals and legumes, not root and tuber. Why? Because root and tuber crops you can easily take from the old stock, from where, from the, like cassava, you just have to harvest cassava, keep your stems and then come back. That's what farmers do and come back and use the old uh, uh, stem. Sweet potato the same. When you, when you have a sweet potato, uh, the following year after the rain comes, few ones will sprout from the ground and farmers will go back there and pick them. And that is why we consistently have low yield. So that is the old seed system. And that is what has stayed so long until the last five years when we begin to have new approach and new drive you know, in the seed system and new uh, seed system for cassava, seed system for sweet potato, seed, seed system for um, uh, for yam uh, have been developed. I will be talking about those ones uh, just shortly. So exactly. Now the, uh, the cassava seed system flow just looks like this uh, from your in vitro uh, material, which has been uh, cleaned up, then you, you do a little micro propagation, then you take the micro uh, the, the, the plantlets to the SAH, and the SAH can multiply millions of cuttings for you within a very short time, which you can take to your field. And these are high quality planting materials. And down, uh, you can see, you can actually see uh, the SAH uh, facility, and um, and and right there you see uh, thousands upon thousands of um, cuttings of um, uh, cassava that are waiting, uh, waiting for farmers to, to, to take to the field. Also for yam, uh, after you've cleaned your material, which is already in vitro, uh, you, you, you take them to the aeroponic 
uh, facility. Uh, that is where I was standing. And it, it's just mist, mist of, um, you know, it, it's not hydro, it's not water, it's just mist of water that has nutrients that is targeted at the root, you can see that on the right, uh, targeted at the root uh, system of the plant, and that is how it feeds. And after, uh, after that, then you have both the, the, the you have both the, uh, uh, the, the, the stem and also, and also um, your micro uh, tubers. And your micro tubers or mini tubers as they are, is always a mixture of both. You have some so small micro, then you have some you know, uh, mini, and then you have some big enough to just go directly to the farm. And these are what you give to farmers to plant and farmers buy. And that is um, that's the good thing. Uh, they have the awareness now that when they use these materials, um, they can actually uh, have higher yield that will compensate for whatever they have spent buying seed. And, and also, we've tested in our, on, uh, in our station uh, the possibility of using the stem directly, and it works. At the end of the day, you can naturally have some that will give you, uh, uh, you know, the, the yam itself that you can eat as big as that, or you can have uh, uh, seed yam. Seed yam is what you take to the farm uh, to plant. And for sweet potato, We've been working with the International Potato Center and then um, from, from our tissue culture materials, clean materials, uh, we do micropropagation and we harden those materials and then we take them to uh, the, um, uh, the screeners facility where we multiply NMAS and begin to sell to uh, farmers. And we can either deliver to farmers field directly and when they purchase, and these, are, these farmers, are not um, actually those, th th these are trained seed multipliers. We call them uh, decentralized vine multipliers. Uh, they, that's, that's their job and they're wrecking the, the good business. Uh, so so they, they sell to other farmers uh, that need. So we actually don't want to sell to farmers directly. We sell to seed multipliers. So we produce early generation seed and we sell to farmers that will further multiply and, 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 the, and sell high quality planting materials. Okay, and then um, these method, all these um, seed systems in a nutshell, uh, what are some challenges that we've been having, you know, putting them to scale, uh, lack of access to capital uh, is always a problem. And then farmers, like I said, down five, six, seven years ago, farmers will not buy, they will not buy seed. But today, especially with the advent of uh, private farms, uh, big private farms that understand that uh, high quality seed is very important in root and tuber crops because root and tuber crops accumulate um, uh, 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 pathogens so easily. Now we're beginning to see change and they are drivers of, of the seed system. So that is uh, rapidly changing. And gov government policies at times, you know, um, that gives uh, 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 seed, uh, to, to farmers free of charge in some in, or in some of their intervention programs. Uh, this is this is this distorts the the commercial seed system because for, uh, our government will go to its own arm and ask them to multiply a seed and then this, they give free and that discourages farmers, uh, uh, some local farmers, smallholder farmers from buying seeds, hoping that government will come. And then farmers' main practice of recycling of root and tuber crop seeds. D discourages investment in seed system of root and tuber crops. Like I said, it's not like um, maize. For, for maize, you have hybrid, um, uh, you have hybrid um, maize, and, and you just have to go back. You plant it once, th then uh, you, you know it's good. the next year. If you keep seed from that, it's going to degenerate. So you you have to go back to to the company to buy. And so, about for root and tuber crops. Uh, if you start with a very good seed and no clean material, uh, you can actually do like two cycles before you have to go back to, 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 to buy seeds. And, and so those are some of the challenges. Uh, now, some of the way forward uh, um, issues are put here for funding we, is to have advocacy with the government, which we have in. Uh, government is responding, but the response of government is actually always you know, uh, very slow. And um, are we advocating in Nigeria for uh, you know, a special fund mechanism uh, that can target the private um, seed companies 
are in root and tuber crops. And actually, the Central Bank of Nigeria uh, has started doing something about that. Now we have some private companies, individuals that are coming up, especially in cassava, uh, in yam, and also, in fact, there is an individual that has um, that is trying to install aeroponics so that they can do millions of um, seed yams as uh, 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 yearly and, and and supply to farmers. And also, the, there is need for the awareness to be created. Um, you know, for, for, for farmers to know that they need, especially the, the, the local farmers, the, the smallholder farmer. Now, that is one of the problems they've been having. Uh, but when you talk to them, they say, hey, this is the way we've been doing it for, for, for years. And so, uh, so, so they just need to be demonstrated to, um, you know, on the need to actually use um, clean, uh, high quality seeds. And, um, and incentives, uh, we, uh, government also need to target Incentives like, like tax, you know, tax incentives. Uh, to hello, can you hear me? I just wanted to know. Yeah, Dr. Solomon, I can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, uh, we government can target, uh, you know, at uh, uh, upcoming uh, companies to, to focus, I mean, to give them tax holidays and encourage them actually to do this more. And so, what are the prospects for commercialization of um, uh, uh, root and tuber crop seeds? And uh, you can see uh, uh, the picture on, on, on the topmost picture there, that is cassava. And that is um, what goes for one hectare. And uh, these are clean, um, uh, high quality uh, seeds that have been produced. And this is just a replica of what we, uh, what is obtainable in Nigeria now. And, and as a, a pack of quality cassava stem, uh, it's about 50 cuttings in, in, in one of each of those uh, packs you are seeing, you have 50 cuttings there, and that sells for about $2. $2. And um, so for, for probat, I mean, a sweet potato, uh, what goes for a, one hectare is about $330 um, uh, 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 high quality vines. But you can see for seed yam, it's very costly to, to plant yam in Nigeria. And then you have about $1,000 to $2,000 uh, for one hectare of, um, of, of yam buying CDM, but if you use a uh, high quality CDM, then you, you get this money back, and uh, that is guaranteed. So in a nutshell, um, that's the crux of um, all I have to say from, from here. I also suffice to say that uh, we, we also use, um, uh, especially for cassava, uh, in our virus indexing, we use, uh, we use PCR, uh, we have a a very uh, functional bioscience center uh, that handles all of that. And for sweet potato, we use the ELISA kit. Um, thank you uh, very much. Thank you, Dr. Solomon, for this wonderful presentation. In fact, uh, Asia Pacific, an Indian context and African context, there is, a, there is a very great scope for collaboration. PCIL has done this uh, capacity building program for last four or five years under the support of Ministry of External Affairs. And again, uh, hopefully, we'll continue this program for the next phase. And we have trained. Exactly. There, there, there is scope for a, a lot of assist also, to, to, especially in kids. Exactly. We have trained 200 candidates from 25 African countries. They visited India. They have seen the commercialization of this culture. They have ah, witnessed that, that, all the success from lab to field, and they're quite enthusiastic to take it forward. Already, I am maintaining a group and a relationship with them. Hopefully, something big will come as a collaboration in context of Indian companies and the African, because there is a great that's, that, That's very good to hear. Also, when they come back to Nigeria, uh, you know, very much. We yeah, have similar kind of scenario, land, and we need to increase productivity, and the special culture will play definitely a great role for enhancing the production and productivity for yeah. the food and nutritional security. So thank you once yeah. again. So thank uh, you. after this presentation, what we have planned that we'll make this program very much interactive and we'll have poll from the participants three times. After this academic presentation, then after industry presentation, and uh, after the panel discussion, we have a brief poll. We'll flash three questions. For the audience, there will be option for selecting only one so that we'll get insight from the audience because I could see 
many of the audience there from the renowned institutions company they are a great stakeholder we are speaking but the other part those who are listening us they are also a great part of the entire development and they will become kind of resource so uh, with this we'll get that insight and uh, we'll start the first poll right now and uh, three questions will come on the screen of the participants they will just select and they submit it they will get 10 to 15 second for submitting their yeah. response and, uh, uh, i request sarath to press so that then which means tomorrow we can so there will be three questions uh, and then i can call him or you can call him it will, it will just come in order is great and after this poll again we'll uh, give the result so this is the first poll which is coming uh, can you can see this on the screen of ncr we don't need crowd you know so Maybe make it be just be a useful function. So that it has started now. Okay, you know, we can have an output. First question is that do you agree that okay. quality of so culture is the key one. for success of plant culture process? In the producing quality, this is what your plant. Your three options: strongly agree, agree, or disagree. The third, so second question: Do you feel that virus indexing of culture is the necessary step? and it should be made as an integral part of the standard disclosure operation and the third one which is very important has the potential of plant disclosure technology for banana and tuber crop been realized in your country so we'll just wait 10 to 15 second then we'll submit this and all the audience they will get result instantly that what is the a majority of audience they think about the quality stock culture virus indexing and the potential of plant is culture so i think just 10 second will wait i request all the audience please participate because your feedback is very very important for the organizers and that will help us in deciding the uh, recommend recommendations and making the way forward yes we we'll just close it now just 3 second 1 2 and 3 final please submit so audience they can see that yeah please share the result oh 71% that will this quality stock culture is the key for success of this culture operation first result disagree 0% disagreement no disagreement and virus indexing dr silviraj 98% they are saying that virus indexing is the critical element dr solomon can you see that 98% and potential of this culture realized in our country 55% they say yes oh good and 28% still they are saying this is no and 17% they are not sure this so this 28 plus 17% this is the key area where we need to work upon so how to realize the full potential of the plant disclosure technology by adopting quality management practices and this gives the scope of this webinar thank you so much we can stop now sharing this thank you mr sarath so now we'll move for the next level of this program and that is from the presentation of the leading expert in the area of plant disclosure those who are running the commercial setup successfully and they will share their success story because the person who is actually doing from the starting to the commercialization and has witnessed all kind of hurdle and made this this such a person successful that will become a kind of good learning point for the audience as well as for the for us also so first uh, i request uh, dr bhagyasri patel who is very known figure in the banana tree culture in india the lady entrepreneur and 
70 percent of the staff in this facility there are the lady operators working in the facility and this facility is providing the quality plant recognized under the department of biotechnology program for last 10 to 12 years so i invite dr patel to share her thought and make a brief presentation and after this presentation just will show the brief video so that how this technology is working that will what will witness that so over to you dr patel yeah thank you so much dr shilkan shukla good morning everyone good morning, good morning. Uh, yeah dr purnima sharma dr ravi khetripal dr mohpatra principal scientist dr selvarajan dr afupe alufemi dr tejpal singh and today's moderator and the motivator behind this webinar dr shukan shukla the panelist and all the participants present over here today i am really glad to attend this webinar on banana i welcome all of you to have a quick to have a look at the rising shine biotech private limited company yes this is a rising shine biotech company certified iso 901 2015 I would like to share my success story of Rise and Shine. It was way back in 1999, the idea of tissue culture clicked my mind. And this is the area before the lab was built in Pune, Theur. And I think that during that time, if we really think big and think fast and think ahead of the future, we can achieve anything in our life. During, in my childhood, I was always interested in doing farming and farming was my passion. And with that passion, the tissue culture laboratory developed. It was in 1999, we had just about 100 square feet of lab and we started the tissue culture laboratory. Dr. After Patel, that- Dr. Patel, sorry to intervene. Uh, please make this slide so more, it is not moving. I, uh, slides okay. are not moving. Okay. Uh, so I'm just speaking on the slides which have been done. So I'll just briefly, yeah, yeah, briefly tell. So after that, we had a laboratory in four in a 4,000 square feet in 2003. And from there, our journey started. It was very tough during 2003 when we had a laboratory to get the ladies to work from the villages and in the beginning to develop quality plants. When I purchased land to put the plants over the banana plants, I saw that many of the plants were virus affected. And so I felt that the farmers should have good quality plants. And thus the idea of tissue culture laboratory clicked and we built this tissue culture laboratory. At present, we have a massive laboratory area of 1,45,000 square feet with the annual production of more than 40 million plants. This is a tissue culture banana lab, laminar flows where the hundred class air quality is maintained. And I would lights are not Patel, we are still in the first light. It's a welcome to Rajan Science Light. Oh, it please make in uh, slide so more. Uh, and uh, I think you are talking in the five six slide. It is still in the first light. What oh, so sorry. How is that? Please ask someone to uh, help you. Because in front of me, it is moving. I just thought. No, it just started moving now. Okay. It is, it is second slide has come. Okay, so sorry. Yeah. Second, third, fourth. I didn't fourth slide already you talked about. Okay, yes. Yes. So this is the laboratory infrastructure at present. It is Ryzen Sign Biotech uh, ISO certified slide is there. Achha, okay. uh, it should be full slide mode. Uh, make it full slide. Slide so then it will move properly. Slide so mode it should be. Uh, slide so mode is yeah. not there. And we get I, think she I think she has to put it on a presentation mode. And you can uh, yeah. share and again you read. Yeah, please raise here. Can you see it now? So sorry, I'm so sorry. 
only one slide is seen it is not moving make it in powerpoint slide show mode i i think if she goes to the she should go down and on the icon on the right you know the right side the third one if she clicks on that then she will be on presentation mode yes from beginning yes it's okay can you see it now is it moving yes, yes, yes. no no it's not moving is it moving sir no we are in the infrastructural facility oh. slide but it is not in slide so mode anyway you can move uh, you can continue but keep on moving slides keep on moving six we are in can the fifth slide this okay, is the first slide can you see it is no it patch wake up oh it's moving now but yeah okay please so oh can you see the fifth eight pass number eight number the fifth slide six okay. is a six slide okay sir okay sir so now it's moving so this is the laminar flow pr rooms where the ladies are working and doing the tissue culture initiation and i would like to proudly say that these are all village ladies who are working over here not highly qualified but they work as if they are highly qualified and working very hard this is the fully automated autoclave we have the plant growth room and we have nearly we have 40 plant growth rooms in our laboratory and one growth room has a capacity of 50000 bottles this is the dispatch which our ladies are doing from the lab we select the suckers from mother plot selection we do the tagging of the bunch and select excellent suckers from the field and r and d department works on it we have our own r and d lab where the suckers virus testing is done indexing is done and even we give up plants to vci for all the to test all the virus testing can you see the slides sir yes please continue please continue yes. okay these are the dtc banana lab stages of initiation mulching shooting and rooting this is the panoramic view of all the greenhouses at theur over here in pune we have got about 40 acres of polyhouses where the pre hardening and post hardening is done this is the primary hardening plant where the capacity is of about nearly 21 million plants and the post hardening is about 25 million plants the secondary hardening plants excellent plants and here i would like to say that we do the soilless hardening we preserve the mother nature and instead of soil we use the other coco pit and pit moss as the mixture of all that for post hardening this is the healthy and uniform banana plot in india this is the banana bunch at harvesting stage of rise and shine plot we have a demo plot over here in pune the banana plant say is in all over india and also abroad we sell in maharashtra gujarat madhya pradesh chatisgarh uttar pradesh bihar telangana andhra pradesh karnataka and tamil nadu there is huge demand in all the states these are the happy farmers of gujarat we have really visited the farmers to see the progress and if there are any suggestions we always take it positively and go ahead in maharashtra the happy farmers in karnataka the ilaiki plant for ilaiki plant many of the young farmers young educated uh, children students are doing farming at present in india and i think india is developing in a very high way now from local to global we are we are just developing in india this is the happy farmer of raipur of andhra pradesh area in madhya pradesh we also export plants to these countries ethiopia kenya 
Ghana, Morocco, Jordan, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Cambodia, Comoran, Omen, Nigeria. And till now, we have exported more than 10 million plants. And there are very good results over there. This is the packaging which we do for banana plants for export. This is the result of Ethiopia and Morocco. The farmers are really happy over there. Next. We are DBT certificate and ISO. 9001-2015 company. I would like to tell all of you all that we have been tied up with an NGO called Global Vikas Trust under the guidance of Mr. Mayang Gandhi. He has visited the Rise and Shine and we have, de we have developed the drought stay, uh, places in Maharashtra at present. This is the GVT team. We are training them. We are giving program to train them. These are all the farmers whom we train and they visit regularly over here at Rise and Shine and a good training is given to them. Here, banana plants we supply to the drought area with a joint venture at GVT. And I would gladly, gladly like to inform you that this is a drought area and the suicide rate has been decreased in India in those areas. We are giving plants, supplying plants to be Latur, Parabni, Usmanabad, and created good infrastructure, made them give facilities of water and guided them technically also. And they are really very happy to produce banana plants and have a good livelihood. We have the CSR project in a company. More than 85% ladies are working in a company. We Regularly train them for yoga, do medical checkup, and even during COVID, we have helped them by giving medicines and food grains. And this is the woman power. And I feel women can really motivate each other and work hard. This company has been developed only because of the support of all these ladies working together like a family and staying doing dedicated work at Tissue Culture Laboratory. I'm really glad that the company is really producing about more than 40 million plus at present. We have a tie-up with nearly about 27 to 30 countries where we export our floriculture plants also and banana plants also. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to present the company. Thank you very much, Dr. Shukan Shunkla and all the participants for listening patiently to me. Thank you, Dr. Patil, for sharing this success story. I remember I met you first time in 2007 during the first assessment for the DVD program. And from that day, I noted that we are very conscious for the quality. And that is, I think, the uh, reason behind this success, that quality. And second, that encouraging your workers through women empowerment. So that is, uh, I think, going in a big way. So thanks for this uh, nice presentation. I hope audience would have enjoyed this entire journey and uh, nicely prepared slides. So I request my team member to just show the uh, video how this banana disclosure operation are working. Oh, moving ahead.
Thank you so much, everyone. So, so I think this has given glimpse to the entire process. And many of the student scholars they have joined, so basically they have benefited from this process. But they have seen through this brief video. So with this thing, with this, I will move for the next presenter. Presenter, uh, Dr. Tej Pal Singh Tomar, is a general manager and agro operation uh, from Merino Industries Limited, Hapur. This is a department of biotechnology recognized facility. In a doing uh, this culture of potato, potato mini tuber. Dr. Tomar is doctorate in agronomy, and his vast experience in promoting uh, potato mini tuber in different different capacities over past 20 to 30 years. So, Dr. Tomar, over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, special thanks to Dr. Shukla who encouraged me to share my experience uh, with the panelists and the participants who are uh, joined across the globe and. Uh, to share my experience as an agronomist, actually, I'm, I am working with the team of biotechnology in different companies since the last 20 years. So I would like to share my experience as an agronomist and the role of uh, uh, this tissue culture driven mini tubers in getting desired quality of tubers. And in present context of India, when we are moving to a brand linked agronomy, uh, we ha have so many challenges. So the quality seed of for different category of potato like French fries, dehydrated products, chips. So I'll share my experience uh, uh, working with Marinos in last eight years and why I was able to mobilize the management. Actually, Marino, just let's share that. Yes. Marino is basically a, a high pressure laminate company of uh, 252 million USD. Just a minute. So, Marino is basically a, a high pressure laminate, uh, 252 million medium sized company uh, working in Hapur. This is 50 kilometers from Delhi. Uh, in East. So uh, they are into agriculture since uh, 1966. So this is a success story to my assessment because in 66, they started from a cold store in Hapur and now they are leading players in potato seed business. Can you see this presentation? Yeah, Dr. Tumur, please make it slide some more. So that's why I have uh, uh, basically given uh, title to my presentation, the scope of tissue culture in quality seed uh, tuber production in India. We have some challenges and way forward as an agronomist to my assessment, I would also share with you. So this is a brief statistics of uh, Marino Industries, uh, so 252 billion USD as I told earlier. Out of that, we are exporting say 30% to different parts of the country and then 179 million USD sale of high pressure laminate we are doing in India. Agri vertical is a very small vertical of 7.8 million USD. Total vertical size is 12.6 million USD. Out of that, 7.8 million USD is coming from this budget, which is our basically potato flax uh, brand. And uh, of total production, 56%, we are exporting to different parts of the country. That is approximately 4.4 million USD. Rest 3.4 million USD we are selling in a domestic market. As I was sharing earlier, uh, this is the this is the this is basically family-owned business. Uh, this family migrated long back from Bangladesh to India, and they started from a small cold store in 1967. And uh, they have been doing so many exercises, experiments with different departments. And then they were growing some seed after getting bitter seed from CPI. I joined this company in 2014 after my ITC uh, assignment. For eight years, I was with ITC and I was very much inspired by the team of biotechnology over there. And I suggested them, why don't you start a tissue culture program in collaboration with the Department of Biotechnology. At that time, BCIL was certifying this tissue culture lab. And it is very difficult to convince the management because they were not into uh, tissue culture business uh, before that. 
and finally uh, md con md was convinced with my proposal and then they put up a state of the art facility in hapur uh, thanks to dr shukla who supported me always a lot of guidance and motivation there are new new assignment for me and presently we are producing approximately uh, 6000 ton quality seed uh, out of this tissue culture lab and doing a contract farming program on 1500 acres with 500 growers we are also running a cold stores of 550000 metric ton capacity and we are also processing 50000 metric ton potato per year and manufacturing potato flex so the conversion of potato flax to uh, potato to potato, potato flax is 5 5 kg potato is required to produce 1 kg of flax and that is the challenge basically when we uh, talk quality variety our competition starts when we export with different uh, countries where dry matter is high their sugar level are low and then uh, we need different type of varieties and then uh, if you see the statistics of india on record we are second largest producer but we process hardly 7% and uh, the major challenge is our major potato is grown in subtropical plains uh, so 90% crops comes in uh, february march and we store it for 8 months and after say june or july the potato starts deteriorating because by plan uh, we uh, never produce processing varieties in india 1997 cpri focus on this uh, agenda and then they release some varieties which are doing very well as now but at the same time uh, keeping business requirement into consideration we are tying up with the different foreign agencies like i am working with the french company to import processing variety in india and i see very good role of tissue culture when we bring a, a new variety in our country it is a rapid multiplication quickly we develop uh, quality uh, mini tubers and multiply to generation 4 so that is the role of uh, tissue culture i am able to see as an agronomist particularly that uh, basically uh, launching a new variety and developing a basic seed stock over conventional methods we were doing before tissue culture in this uh, country because it conventional uh, seed if you see in our country of total seed requirement is approximately 54 5.4 million ton and out of that if you see the pie 85% is unorganized private growers and there is the there i see a very good scope of tissue culture if we rope in this uh, this technique and replace this 85% so there is a huge huge potential of uh, our uh, the seed business in this country and that's was the reason i was able to man uh, convince uh, management and if you see the gap presently we are uh, supplying only 8 8 lakh 0.8 million ton seed whereas the requirement is 54 5.4 million 54 lakhs and if i uh, work out this requirement on 100% replacement assuming that that total seed will be replaced every year there is a clear cut gap of 45 lakh ton seed in this country if i work out 30% ssr which is widely acceptable in the industry we need 9 lakh 70000 metric ton seed so there is a huge scope of tissue culture technique where we need to multiply quality seed very fast and launch varieties according to the requirement of different categories we are running in our countries so far our tissue culture facility is concerned it says a very good facility a hybrid model a small facility in hapur and attached with the aeroponics and then uh, that house is and then open field we are also doing because this location gives me this opportunity to multiply hardened tissue culture plants in open field because we have 75 80 days virus free effort free window at hapur so that is the advantage i am trying to uh, develop a hybrid model uh, according to the profile of varieties and the requirement of seed size of uh, my team and uh, that's why i will show you this next slide uh, by total of uh, 2 lakh 32 tissue culture plants approximately 12000 tcp tissue culture plants goes to aeroponics 8000 goes to net houses and remaining 2 lakh 12000 tissue culture plants goes directly to the field without any net 
and I, I can share this on record because uh, uh, in 75, this uh, FH3 window I had mentioned earlier, our virus content in generation one or generation two is hardly less than 0.5%. So that is the advantage of tissue culture, uh, that is how we protect it. And then this controlled multiplication for three generations at least, it gives a clear cut business advantage versus conventional method. This is the small photo uh, uh, pics I have uh, taken from my facility. My, uh, my uh, basically assessment of this technique is, this is very good technique for rapid multiplication and disease-free basic seed. And particularly, as I told earlier, when we, we are linked to the market, we are not in general multiplication as a corporate. I need to produce a variety and their seed size, the virus content according to my customers. So uh, my competition is uh, uh, basically a CPRI who produce every year 2,500 metric ton litre seed. So we have a system in this country. If you produce any seed, it undergoes a virus testing and then certification process. So if I want to produce virus-free basic seed, then yes, tissue culture is the answer. It is also very uh, a very effective technique when we uh, want to revive some varieties to create germplasm of biodiverse trait, like a uh, lot of challenges we are now facing, uh, nutrient economy, disease resistance, heat tolerance, and uh, all breeder has to think on that, whether they can develop a quick germplasm of different traits and then give us varieties for different geographies for different categories. If you compare this technique uh, with the conventional system, uh, their system was different stage one, two, three, four, like that. This paper was published in uh, uh, nine, uh, 2013, and I've taken uh, reference as well. So if you see the stage three virus incidents, this is, these are the number of plants which were basically roped out uh, because of certain virus uh, infections. Generation one tissue culture driven have almost one third uh, load versus this conventional third. And that gives me advantage when I sell my generation four to the market and then get premium over that. Not only that, it also gives opportunity to farmer to multiply for more number of generation by a farmer given seed, one kg, he can multiply to nine kg, three or uh, two years. So this is the advantage of uh, tissue culture system when first three generations are, multiplication are absolutely protected and we get quality generation one disease free seed. Keeping the... Uh, Forecast of uh, CPRI and uh, it's, a, it's a publication vision 250 documents. Uh, we, we are going to double our seed requirement in 2045. So very clearly it's growing six to 7% every year. And we will be uh, basically uh, requiring seed of different categories now. It is not a general multiplication to feed our country population, but it is also coming a uh, lot of demand from industry side and then the flex the kind of government has projected, we will be requiring different type of varieties for manufacturing chips, for manufacturing uh, french fries, for manufacturing uh, flax, dehydrated products. And that's why I'm saying uh, this tissue culture technique is uh, really going to play a very vital role in developing category specific varieties and rapid multiplication of quality seed. So far, challenges and way forward are concerned. Uh, availability of quality seed, as I've told, there is a huge gap, uh, availability and this uh, basically requirement. And uh, more than that, we need a quality seed at a reasonable price because Indian customers are uh, very particular on that. Number two, the category of uh, category of specific varieties uh, consists to supply consistent raw material to processing industry, as I shared earlier. My PUI, which is called in industry potato use index, is 5.5 versus Europe 4.5. So if I don't manage that, I can't compete with European countries who are exporting to the same customer in uh, different parts of the globe. Locally adaptable varieties to counter biotic and abiotic stress. We have different set of soils, different series of soils. So we need definitely the varieties which can be planted in different types of soils and who can counter different type of biotic stress like heat tolerance, 
slightly saline areas we have we don't have neutral soil in our country because our soil ph is 7.5 to 8.5 so these are not ideal for potato we have tropicalized potato in india though it is not a indian crop this is basically long back it was imported or maybe brought from europe but yes successfully indian uh, institutes have sub tropicalize it so the challenge is going forward to develop biotic abiotic heat tolerant varieties now we have to develop a quality seed multiplication program uh, to considering the exposure of uh, early generation seed in uh, open field so we have to do uh, real time assess real time rapid uh, that, uh, the speaker told me real time pcr test just to understand the degeneration rate and that is why uh, it is high time to work together and this is the way forward i personally believe as an industry uh, agronomist to match the global quality benchmark this is a big challenge for us we are dependent now uh, on uh, different uh, countries particularly the european countries uh, for varieties and we don't have answer for industry right now and our variety contribution is hardly uh, 40 45% so this is the time when we develop indigenous varieties using this tissue culture technology and uh, there are certain issues genetic uh, genetic uh, fidelity uh, earlier speaker uh, here because sometime uh, if we are not we, we don't standardize our process we see some genetic drift there are some issues in psi potato shop index that challenges we have to uh, work together so we have to marry our development agenda it can't be work in isolation that agronomist uh, whatever problem he is uh, facing in the field give it uh, different uh, tissue culture departments and uh, icr support pcl uh, no doubt the nodal agency should marry their development agenda to uh, give the uh, answer to industry the biggest problem in our country is the single window ims system because the information management system is very difficult for real time data access uh, if i ask the potato requirement and then i don't get answer then i will take all the business call based on certain speculations so we have to develop a system sometime i discuss with different uh, business partners like potato store owners they tell me so many number of stories but it is does not the fact the time has come we work i will share one example i was uh, called by new zealand government for a presentation and then when i requested them to give the data of their country within 10 minutes data was available at my table but if you see uh, uh, different potato uh, companies or institutes working in on potato in india their data is significantly vary say one say the 43 million other say for 53 million like that and their data is not even updated they will give you say three three or four year data old data so that they will never help industry to take a business call number two they said there is a seamless transaction uh, is required because uh, i have seen in tissue culture uh, certification system very good support first i got all the guidance from bcil and now i am working with nipgr which is again a db uh, dpt institute the people are very aggressive actually very, very very proactive so this is the way we should take it forward but i personally believe as an agronomist i am not a biotechnologist uh, there is a requirement of this technology in india and we have now enough knowledge to commercialize it thank you very much thank you dr tomar for this nice presentation you have briefly covered various aspect of potato disculture now potato is an integral part of our life life and this quality virus free planting material is definitely it is adding value to the processing industry and whatever the quality they require that is being provided by the potato miniature industry so similar to the banana we have a very 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 brief video for the potato disculture process and that will give some glimpse of the entire uh, technology how it starts and how it is going for the mini tuber production so i request my team to just show that brief video for the audience
you need to unmute yeah 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 thank you thanks for reminding me so thank you so much with this brief video this banana and the potato sculpture now we have seen how this in vitro technology is going to expect or how it is helping farmers in a big way so before we proceed for the third session that is the interactive panel discussion uh, we'll have a brief uh, poll just like we had uh, we'll just take 10 uh, 15 20 seconds and we have second round of poll from the audience so that we'll get the insight so i request my team to please share that uh, poll three just three questions and again we'll be having just three answers uh, three questions you will have to select one answer out of that so request my team just to project now this will appear on the screen so first is that do we agree that bcil with vast experience in establishing quality management system in india and apari as a viable organization in asia pacific are rightly positioned to be the knowledge partner for hand holding and the facilitating quality management program in the country this is the first one. We get four options: strongly agree, agree, disagree, and not sure. The second question: What are the main constraints to realize the full potential of this culture technology in your country? That is a quality management system, skill or trained manpower, infra and financial support. The second one. Now the third question. Traceability, regarding the traceability, traceability of the operation from mother plant to TC rest plant is important, important for quality management. Do you agree that user-friendly software application or mobile app, that is IoT platform, may play an important, effective role in quality assurance and management? So all the three questions on your screen. Please be quick, select one option out of given options for all the three questions and submit quickly so that we'll get idea about your perception, about your experience. So just we'll give 10 seconds, submit your response, then we'll show the result to the audience. Now you're closing it. Last three seconds. Yeah, we close now. So I request my team to share the result to the audience so that they will come to know. Oh, great, great support for BCL and Apari. 40% strongly agree, 56 agree, no disagreement. Just 4% are not sure. We like to listen separately, those are not sure. So good. Now the second second response constraint quality management little uh, distributed answer sixteen percent they are saying quality management but fifteen percent skill manpower twenty seven infra related issues and the financial support awareness and uh, majority of people are saying all of the above. There are many constraints. So this gives the platform to develop a program which will help participants. Now traceability, again, people they are saying 47 plus 47. That strongly agree that traceability is a very important in the software IoT may play a very important role to address this concern so thank you for your feedback definitely this will help us in incorporating your input for the next four selection so just i request my team to stop this whole result so before i move for the panel discussion we are running behind the schedule i would seek uh, permission of a chairman of this uh, webinar uh, dr ravi khetrapal Executive Secretary Apari and Dr. Rishi Tyagi to extend some time so that we can have in a discussion.
Yeah, please go ahead, Dr. Shukla. Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, it was so far, it's a very good journey. All the audience who has joined, sincerely, they are attending and providing their all the insights during the program. And we had presentation from academia and industry. And we had a wonderful session so far. So this will be very, very uh, interesting to interact with our uh, different stakeholders, industry, as well as uh, research institutions. We have with us Dr. Henry Wagoba from Naro, Uganda. Dr. Sanjay Chandak, as I introduced you in the beginning, a leading entrepreneur in India, is an MD of Steel Biotech Limited and operating this facility for the last three decades. Professor Rekha, Rekha Harish Sarkar, who is from Dhaka University, pioneer in practice culture and uh, biotechnology research, and Dr. T. H. Wu from Taiwan Banana Research Institute. So we have this team panelists. And we'd like to hear briefly about their perception about the potential of this technology. So first, I would start from Professor Sarkar that uh, I would ask him, Professor, how do you perceive growth potential of banana and the tuber crop, particularly in Bangladesh perspective? Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sukla. Uh, and also good afternoon to all the presenters and panelists and participants. Uh, I think uh, I, I learned quite a lot uh, through these presentations, and particularly in all these presentations for the banana and then the potato, and uh, particularly the presentation from Dr. Patil, and also the presentation from, uh, you know, uh, the presentation from the uh, Africa the, regarding the uh, tuber crops. So I think all presentations are very good. You know, in Bangladesh, actually, we've been trying to establish uh, potato tissue culture and banana tissue culture uh, for a long time. But uh, there's some work is going on and some commercial companies have actually been working. But uh, particularly, you know, we have not achieved that much commercialized, you know, venture in this area. So it is, we are actually still lagging behind. But, these crops, particularly banana and potato, are very important for Bangladesh. And uh, although limited scale tissue culture activity is going on, I think uh, that everybody actually mentioned that you know um, uh, the we have some good we can develop some collaboration in the future because Bangladesh needs some training as well in the in the future and also you know the technology that has been developed, uh, particularly for the you know the the bioreactor technology. And uh, you know the the mass propagation technology is not been, has not been achieved in Bangladesh. So, but the, if you if you consider the value and the uh, technology, the importance of the technology is very good, and the potentialities are there. So I think we I will uh, ask this uh, you know the panelists and other things and also particularly DCIL can help Bangladesh uh, regarding the development of this technology. There are some. Uh, companies, small scale private companies are actually involved, but uh, they don't know the advanced technology. So they are you know, still behind the, the present scenario. And also, uh, particularly in potato, uh, they can produce you know, uh, virus-free plantlets, but the mass scale propagation uh, in a virus-free condition uh, are they are not uh, they are not you know they are not they have not achieved that uh, technology. So in my opinion. It will be good thing that we can develop collaboration in the future, and I think I am very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, delighted by this presentation. I think hopefully we can share in the future, and I think Bangladesh and uh, India have the same kind of uh, uh, environmental conditions and the nature of the plant growth and things like that. So we think in the future we can develop a good collaboration. I think I have learned a lot, and I'll, my again I would like to thank everybody. Uh, for your nice presentation, Dr. Silveras, Dr. Patil, and Dr. Dr. Solomon. Uh, the, the presentations are very good, and also the, the sponsoring. All presentations are very good. Thank you so much. If you have any uh, anything to react, I, I, I think I can uh, share in the now. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Professor Sarkar, for your insight. And definitely, Bangladesh, India, there's a lots of similar uh, background 
bonding and there is a great scope for collaboration, particularly for banana and potato sculpture. Even in BCL, we get a lot of query that we need certain kind of hand holding, and we can, I think, develop a, some program uh, in future. So uh, I uh, request uh, now Dr. Sanjay Chandak. Uh, Dr. Chandak, uh, what do you feel regarding the role of uh, quality mother culture in banana uh, culture? Because you have been doing banana disculpture for a long, long time, and it is a supplying plant across India and also outside. So how do you think that quality stock culture is very important? So briefly, brief comment. Uh, Dr. Chandak, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Dr. Shukla, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I won't take enough time uh, because we are uh, we are already having short of time. But I congratulate the BCIL team for uh, arranging this uh, very important webinar. <clears throat> uh, the role of quality mother culture is huge. In fact, it's very important uh, in tissue culture until date. Uh, if, I, if I talk about Indian scenario, till date, the companies were developing these cultures themselves with their own know-how. So everyone was doing in a different way. And uh, some of them were importing these cultures from uh, Israel, but uh, which is also a very expensive and uh, time-taking process because uh, some permissions are required. And uh, I'm very uh, happy to learn that uh, BCIL has initiated, has taken a step forward and uh, to solve this problem and have uh, developed a program to give, provide quality stock cultures to the banana tissue culture small labs. Because these small labs, they don't have that much capacity or that much manpower that people can visit the fields, identify the plants, then collect them. It's a huge, long process. So I'm very happy and I thank the BCIL for uh, taking a step forward to solve this important issue. The quality plant material with BCI culture will definitely have a standard uh, cultures and the productivity of the field will definitely improve. So uh, it's a very good step. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Dr. Chandak. At BCL, we'll always, we also always believe on the partnership and the quality management aspects. So we have been working with the industry for the last two decades and definitely will continue our support association with industry in, in different different capacity. So now I would come to Dr. Dr. Wu from PBRI, is from uh, Taiwan Banana Research Institute. So I would like to know that how what is your procedure to confirm the quality of the tissue culture banana in terms of the true to tightness, in terms of the virus indexing. So what procedure uh, you have at, in your country and do you have any kind of quality management program supported by government? So your perception, Dr. Wu. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to the American presenters, panelists, and all the participants. I'm Zhang Kuang from Taiwan. And to, for, I work for the Taiwan Banana Research Institute. To produce banana tissue culture blenders, um, Taiwan Banana Research Institute follows the system of the three types of seed production protocols. We use the, we have the breeder foundation and certified seeds, but instead of seed, the material we use is tissue culture blenders. We have the Musa germplasm breeding stock, foundation plants, and certified plants to assure the plants are true to type. So first uh, we do field observation and examine if all the characteristics are true to type. We also take samples and send them to the lab to confirm that they are virus free. Then we take the sucker for initial culture and keep it in vitro as breeding stock. Second, we deflask de some of the breeding stock and plant it in the greenhouse as the foundation plants. Then we do the examination the second time when they are mature. Third, we take the sucker from the foundation plants for initial culture, subculture three times, then deplast and transplant them in five inch pots in the greenhouse. So these are the certified mother plants. So when we need to produce a certain variety, we just go to the greenhouse and take the potted plants as material for tissue culture. 
and they are true to type and and also virus free. So um, in terms of the quality problem we have for banana teach culture in Taiwan, the biggest quality problem is the mutation. So when we do mass production for teach culture, we know it's inevitable to have mutants, but farmers complain about mut mutants performing differently and they may reduce the production. So to maintain the quality when when we produce blendlets, um, we limit the subculture to six times only. Each sucker only produces about 2,000 blendlets in total. We also keep the number of mutants as low as possible by removing any distinguishable mutants like uh, leaf mutation during the tissue culture process and also in the nursery. So therefore we can guarantee farmers that our mutation rate is less than 5%. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wu. And uh, we'll also be adopt a similar kind of a standard where we define the multiplication cycle, indexing of viruses before starting the culture and during the, before the supply. So it's this kind of similar arrangement. So definitely uh, we can think about having similar kind of program because uh, Asia Pacific, Taiwan, Bangladesh, India has kind of similar kind of background. So there is a kind of opportunity for us. Now, uh, moving for the next uh, panelist, Dr. Henry from Naro, Uganda. Uh, I would like to ask you that what are the biggest technical challenges you feel that it comes in the way while doing tissue culture of fruit and tuber crop? So biggest technical challenges, what, what is for your opinion, Dr. Henry, please. So thank you, Dr. Shukla. Um, I'm Henry, Henry Wagaba from Naro, Uganda. And I'm happy to see um, everybody here and thanks for the invitation. So uh, cassava tissue culture, just like any other crop uh, or plant has the same kind of challenges. Uh, for example, the main one is usually contamination. Contamination comes um, as you work on material in the culture, in, in the tissue culture, and then you find um, different microorganisms, like say fungus, or you have bacteria growing on them. And the only way to manage this is uh, surely um, uh, sterilize thoroughly as, as you introduce. And this is usually for uh, material that you're introducing for the first time in the lab. And then the other thing is cassava sometimes has endophytes. So um, the contamination may not be um, uh, immediately seen, but uh, with time, after a few weeks, uh, you see uh, bacteria or stuff coming from inside the uh, there. So that's one of the uh, biggest challenges that, that we, we realize here in, 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 um, in, in, in culture. So basically it's to continuously uh, clean uh, using ethanol, wiping a lot of benches, uh, just to make sure that uh, you can control this. So the other challenge that we have is uh, Henry, we lost your voice. <clears throat> I think there is some network issue. Uh, okay. Usually, um, yeah. uh, things that uh, go through many cycles, uh, usually you get that you may have uh, views that may not be um, properly reconstituted uh, in media. And so this is one of other challenge that we see. Then also many of the varieties that farmers grow, um, sometimes are recalcitrant. They can't uh, be very nicely uh, cultured in, in culture and yet they are very good culinary, very good tastes, very good, but they can't be grown in, in culture. So that's one other challenge that we see a lot. Then the last one that I will talk about is the uh, uh, winning cassava can actually be a problem. 
Um, so um, in many cases, sometimes we found that uh, that moving things uh, from from the tissue culture into a screen house, um, sometimes uh, the conditions may not be favoring uh, 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 winning of these plants. So with time, you need to kind of optimize them. This mainly depends on the uh, environment, the, the ambient conditions. You need to keep reducing the humidity very, very slowly. The, the, the slower the rate at which you're reducing that humidity, uh, the bigger the, yeah, the, the, the success rate. So with time, we have learned to optimize this process slowly, which is uh, uh, something that uh, we, we, can, we can learn a lot from, from other, other teams that are doing this. So that's, that's, that's what I can submit right now in the interest of time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Dr. Henry. So uh, what I'm uh, thinking, I'm just I'm certain that uh, panel discussion duration. So all the panelists, the speakers, they're available with us so that we can have some question from the audience. Rather than I shall be asking you something, we'll try to get some question from the audience and the respective panelist speaker, they may address that concern. So I'll not elaborate to this panel discussion because of the paucity of time. Uh, otherwise, uh, this would have been very interesting discussion and I think whether it would require the full day, whole day for the discussion. So I will not take much time. There's already we are running behind the schedule. So before we come to the interaction with the audience, uh, the third round of poll, very brief. Hello. Again, 20 seconds. And uh, we'll just have this opinion from the audience. Then we'll move for the no, driver to sign up, but I think I'm adding. Yeah, I request my team to just like that. All questions. So now this is the third round of poll, and uh, you might receive this uh, on your screen. Uh, this is a basically a feedback from the audience. Uh, first question, is there a need for an effective regional training platform for promoting tissue culture entrepreneurship in Asia Pacific? You have to select yes or no. Then how do you rate this webinar in terms of enhancing your knowledge in plant tissue culture? Excellent, very good, good, fair. Second last, would you like to integrate knowledge gained during this webinar in your research or extension program. And the last one, does this webinar encourage you to promote tissue culture and establish tissue culture facility in your country? So this is just four basic query posted for the audience. Please complete your submission in few seconds. So just we'll wait for 10 seconds and we'll announce the result before we move to the interactive session with the audience. So 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Mr. Sarath, please say result. Oh, very interesting result. 98% of the participants, they feel that there is a need for an effective regional training platform for promoting plant culture entrepreneurship. 98%. Then second, thank you for this positive feedback. Everyone has said it's a very good, very good, excellent. No one said it's a fair. So thank you for this compliment. Third, would like to have integrated knowledge, integrated knowledge 
for your extension research work? Yes, 92% said that they will integrate this knowledge for their research extension. So as an organizer, as a BCL, Apari, we feel very good that you are going to use this knowledge for your further research extension program. Now, whether this encourage you to set up your laboratory in your country? 92% they said yes. 1% they said no, they're not enthusiastic anyway. And just 7% they said not sure. So thank you for this result, this encouraging reply responses. So this, with this, we'll conclude this polling session third. Please stop this there. Okay, so now we are coming to the final session of this program. We have around 10 minutes for the interactive session. Please raise your hand and I will ask host to unmute them so that they can ask question. And also they can, if they will say that to whom it is addressed, that will be nice. So that respective panel speaker, they can address the question raised by the audience. So first question from Siddharth Diwari we received. Uh, yes, Siddharth, you can you can speak. You can unmute yourself, and you can raise your question. Yeah, you can speak, Dr. Siddharth. So if I, if Dr. Siddharth is not active at the moment, so uh, you can allow Mr. Raman Kumar Rana. Yeah, Mr. Raman. Please, we can hear you. Yeah, Mr. Rana, you have been unmuted. Dr. Tiwari, you are also unmuted. You can speak. I I'm not getting any response from them. So I'll move to the Mr. Hossein Ahmad Nanu. Yes. Mr. Hossein. Uh, yes, sir. Can you uh, share uh, Benana commercial protocol? Commercial protocol, it means the technology? Yes, technology. I think protocol, it is always with the commercial organization, also with the NRC Banana Grishi. So please write to them what I would say. Dr. Silvirajan, he has already shared his contact detail in the chat box. Or you can write to us, we'll direct you to the NRC Banana Grishi. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Siddharth, can you hear me? You have been unmuted, you can speak. Or I will now add Dr. Ravinder Kumar. Yes, Mr. Sir. Ravinder Kumar. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Very good afternoon, sir. First of all, congratulations for organizing a wonderful webinar with uh, more than 40 international countries. I want to ask uh, when you are going to start this uh, uh, centralized uh, scheme for quality stock culture uh, supply, sir? Already, uh, I think BCL has written to the companies that it is available with us. Okay, sir. And uh, by the first week of next month, this will be available with the support of our, of our industry and uh, institutional partner. It will be available very soon. Yes, is there any registration or uh, something is uh, 
something you need to submit a form that our cell team will guide you and on cell website it will give that information okay thank any you any information you want from the panelist from the speakers any question you have no sir thank you sir okay so now uh, i will request Jer jerema Uh, Mr. Muhammad Hussain Ahmad, if you can hear me, that please unmute yourself and raise your question. Very. Anyone? Those who want to ask something, they can raise their hand. Josveda Bobo wants to say something. I have unmuted him. Yeah, Mr. Bobo. Uh, Dr. Shukla, there is a question from some anonymous person to Dr. Selva Rajan. The question is, what exactly is the success rate of bioreactor and are commercial units using these bioreactors for large-scale production? Dr. Selvarajan, if you are there, yes, would you like to answer? Yeah, yeah. yeah I am here. Uh, sir, actually, this uh, we have given to Agro Innovate, uh, like BCAL for ICRS got Agro Innovate, a private uh, company, which can uh, give on commercial research. We have fixed a cost of 15 lakhs rupees uh, for bioreactor technology. That is a new tissue culture, genera, uh, tissue culture banana system. Uh, it's a 15 lakhs rupees. And if it is uh, uh, for government, the subsidy is there uh, for two or three lakhs rupees. So uh, we have given to one company now, uh, situated in uh, Karnataka. Uh, they have just recently taken this uh, bioreactor technology. Uh, that will be they are going to implement. Otherwise, uh, yes, the uh, the, the uh, experience what we have with this uh, in our level, uh, the laboratory level, uh, it is a promising one. And uh, as I said, uh, it will be virus free. And again, uh, the variability is very less. It's just two percent or less actually. So one can attempt for uh, grand nine banana immediately. Thank you, Dr. And, and Another question is from uh, participants from Vietnam, Khang Nguyen. Then the question is targeted to Dr. Tejpal. Question is, I would like to ask about the formula of nutrient using for aeroponics potato production and how you keep pool to potato root system in aeroponic system. Uh, Dr. Tejpal, if you are there, would you like to answer? Uh, we follow the guidelines given by Central Potato Research Institute. So, so they can write directly to uh, the director and then they will get the because technology was developed by CPRI only. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, or they will write to, they can write to BCIL. We can connect them to CPRI. Yes, 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 yes. Because it is, it is very much variety specific. And as I mentioned, because if you do some manipulation and uh, don't standardize with the variety, that might sometime cause some genetic fidelity kind of issue. Particularly, I have seen this in the Indian varieties, the Kufri uh, Bahar. So they can directly write to director CPRI through BCIL and they will give the uh, standard formula for this uh, aeroponics. So, uh, Another question is uh, tissue culture derived plants. Who will fix the price? Government or any agency? Who would answer this question? It is a market driven. <laughs> Demand driven. Demand driven. Yes. And the variety to variety, the cost of plant, it is at 10 rupees, some it goes up to 1000 also. And uh, sometime if a high production, 
even banana disco industry will struggle and they will have to offer something one plus one or something to reduce the price so it is demand driven one has to predict market and produce accordingly only thing when you are doing the commercial disclosure you have to have multiple portfolio in your product else doing one or two crop will not, will not sustain one annual crop one perennial crop one tree species then only it is viable else doing one or two crop this will be very difficult to sustain uh, as commercially uh, mr mallikarjun wants to say something i unmuted mr mallikarjun please unmute yourself you have to again unmute at your level yes you can you can raise your question mr mallikar juna not able to hear you so we are moving to the ram jain devarjan shukla thank you i am dr ramajim from nrc banana principal scientist article sir yes. i am running one institute project on deduction of somoctonal variant from different banana gardens of uh, india actually though there are variations and it is uh, well below 5% say for example in case of uh, grand nine only a dwarf variant is there it is well uh, less than 0.1% only it is not in alarming this one but when you go to the naipu one where it is uh, around 5% variations we could record the somoclonal variant though yeah. it is not yield limiting variation so it means around 5% of the plant without side sucker actually in case of naipu one the somoclonal variants are different suppose in case of northern tissue culture garden some five uh, below 5% of the plants become green instead of the soda stem becoming a red color in case of red banana there is a color differences in the fruit again it is of course around 2% only but what i am urging the bcil is if you can uh, have a, a collaborative project to deduct the somoclonal variant uh, with a molecular marker Uh, in a long run suppose if you go for any robust method uh, for multiplication the we can uh, if you have a somoclonal variant specific molecular marker it will be useful that's what my this yeah one. dr ramjan thank you for your suggestion you also a known expert in yeah. this area so definitely we'll talk separately in separate window thank i'd you. like to take it up because this is very relevant for the banana industry because as a farmer they want uniform true to type plant so that they will they can plant their plant it secure harvesting schedule so thank you thank so you. we can take one or two more question i have unmuted those who raised their hand they can ask their question directly dr josveda bobo sorry i'm not maybe i yeah, have I don't see the yeah so yes you are there please hello sir If we can hear you, please. Sir, can I can I have some advice on the use of a bioreactor? We purchased a bioreactor from Belgium. It's the Vovid one. So, is there any one of you using the same bioreactor so that we can have some advice? So, uh, we, I could not get your question. Can you speak a little louder? we want to rapidly multiply banana inside our lab and uh, we've been using the vervet bioreactor the one uh, manufactured in belgium oh. uh, my question is does anyone of you using the same bioreactor or can we no 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 <coughs> mr bobo what we have developed uh, the bioreactor is our own and we have filed a patent in indian uh, patent office Uh, we are about to get uh, granted this particular patent for uh, uh, this bioreactor for banana, not the one which you are telling about that Belgium one. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. How this is taking care of variation is asking. Okay. Uh, how? Uh, it's only field experience because we have done uh, 
brand name banana sls rastali these two varieties we have planted in the field and we have checked actually so in that uh, the variability is below 2% that is the in fact we have published this particular uh, results in the research paper i can share the research paper also if uh, bobo writes to uh, writes a mail to director nrcb at gmail.com if you write we will send you the research paper uh, about the genetic fertility of uh, ecs derived tissue plants so thank you so much i had unmuted all those who raised their hand if anyone wants to say something uh, please raise your question as we'll move to the uh, concluding session now okay uh, my hand is up also yeah okay I, i just quickly want to ask like the bioreactor um has been largely used in banana in india i want to ask um if uh the uh if it, if we think it can actually be applied in root and tuber crops and um what, what are, if if at all uh, you think it can be applied in root and tuber crops then what, what are the challenges you think may, may actually arise i mean fr from your experience thank you oh salvan yes uh definitely it can be tried uh, for root and tuber crops also the one which we have developed but of course you have to standardize uh, the ingredients and other things otherwise the vessel which we have developed uh, is the one which we have patented that sir uh, we call somatic embryogenesis uh, uh, regeneration vessel which can be uh, you can you can buy that uh, vessel patent and uh, once patent patent is granted then you can buy the technology also Uh, uh that's a vessel alone of course you had to standardize uh, uh, the parameters for uh, root and tuber crops if you use our uh, bioreactor this what the standards is only for banana but you can use that uh, same uh, the vessel for uh, your crops also thank you so thanks to all the participants for this their active involvement in the entire course of this webinar uh, they attended all the segment very sincerely and the participated in all the poll sincere thank to all the speakers panelists so with this uh, with the permission of chair we, th we can move to the final this closing remark uh, by dr rishi kumar tyagi coordinator of fco uh, yes please sir uh, i request uh, dr tyagi who is the basically key motivator behind all this uh, what we thought about this webinar involving all the stakeholder and who is very keen uh, to promote plant sculpture as a efficient tool for sustainable development in fact we wrote very good success story under his guidance only banana sculpture then apple root stock sculpture success story so he is the leader behind this all the initiatives so i request dr tyagi please please your closing remark uh thank you dr ravi thank you dr shukla for giving me the opportunity in fact uh, <clears throat> we have been listening all the eminent speakers and the panelists all through this webinar it has been very refreshing for me particularly at personal level because almost 20 years i have been involved in tissue culture and particularly in banana ginger turmeric i have been uh, doing the tissue culture but not for multiplication but for in vitro conservation so it was quite refreshing to me and it was refreshing to me to see dr selvar ayan and the the new developments in the nrc banana uh, trichy uh, where i happened to be the part of uh, nrc banana trichy as a research advisory committee member for quite some time so seeing the seeing the progress uh, to the level of the bioreactor what they have developed this is something new and very miraculous uh, what the interest has been shown by uh, dr solomon also and i am sure the other participant must have shown the interest in the bioreactor and uh, dr selvaraj and i am sure that once the patent will be granted then the technology can be sold out and i i think 
what, what you have demonstrated or what you have spoken in your presentation, it is very right combination of the academia to the commercial level in one institute. So ICR is, uh, has to be congratulated. The NRC Banana has to be congratulated for developing this research protocol to the commercial protocol. And I am sure the industry people are also there who have been learning and listening very carefully that what are the academic institutions come up and that can be applied, that can be demonstrated to adopt it at the commercial level. So it was very interesting and uh, Dr. Selvarajan and Dr. Solomon has been talking about the root and tuber crops, which are not only important staple crops like cassava, yam, sweet potato in Africa, but in Asia, in many country of Asia also, these are the crops, uh, particularly in Southern part of India is a very, very uh, important crops like sweet potato and the cassava and uh, ginger, turmeric, they are cash crop also. So, uh, Dr. Shukla, when we started thinking about this webinar series, I am very happy to note that uh, we had taken off a very, in a very good note and the very rich information has been shared, learning across uh, with the different country participants, uh, as you have mentioned, 40, 42 participants are there. Although we started thinking about the Apari member countries to, for this because the the requirement of a party member country was surveyed, and one of the requirement was the that tissue culture should be popularized. Uh, although we always talk of the high-end uh, biotechnology, but uh, I consider that the countries for the middle-income uh, group or the low-income group, the tissue culture is equally important. And with that objective, we we plan this uh, webinar series. I personally is very satisfied to see the, uh, the presentations and the example from the industries. I, I think uh, Dr. Bhagyalakshmi Patil is one of the greatest example to be emulated by many other countries that started with a small room and 40 acre greenhouse structure she has built up. And I am sure that through this uh, business or the, through this entrepreneurship, uh, this, uh, uh, she has empowered a rural woman to a large extent to what we could see in the, have the impression in this uh, short video also. Similarly about the potato, Dr. Tejpal Singh has given. given uh, I don't know how many of you know that Hapur is a very small, small town, a district level uh, city, very small city. But I never knew that in that small city that entrepreneurship can be developed and the, the seed material of the potato can be developed and can be exported to the different countries. That shows that with the smallholder farmers, with the young and women, what have been shown by Dr. Patil and Dr. Tejpal, that entrepreneurship in the tissue culture is quite promising area where you can improve your income and where you can improve your livelihood. At the same time, you can provide the the subsistence to a lot of uh, employees in this entrepreneurship uh, or the, in this uh, establishment. Uh, I, this is already, we are late and uh, I will not venture into keep on talking because of two, three reasons. One is that uh, my throat is also not good. And the second is we are already late. And third is that uh, we are, uh, at least where I am located, it is more than it is after midnight, so I would like to also, <laughs> my personal note, to uh, call it a day off. Uh, before that, uh, I say so, uh, I would like to thank, uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Ravi Khetrapal, uh, with whom I have been discussing all this program, and then Dr. Shukla, we developed this program, and uh, we thought that uh, this kind of webinar series not only for one crop, the holistic way, what uh, Dr. Ravi has also mentioned in his opening remarks, that we have planned it in a holistic way. And, <clears throat> and I, I think uh, this takeoff is very good and uh, three more webinars uh, will also be there. If uh, you may allow me to share this screen, that uh, another will be on 30th June, that will be on the fruits and cash crop particularly date palm, palm grain and sugar cane. And 29th July on the tree and woody plants. 
and uh, last and fourth webinar will be ornamental plants which also have very uh, high uh, and uh, cash crop particularly in the southeast asia and asia so i i i thank you uh, dr ravi i thank you dr shukla all the eminent panelists and i i my special thank to dr mahapatra uh, the director general of icr and the vice chair of opari for taking out the time and uh, in fact his encouraging words all, always uh, uh, always encourage us to to do more and more in this area so in absentia thanks to dr mahapatra for his encouragement I and thanks to all the speakers and the panelists and all the more that uh, i thank to all the participants, including the APARI sponsored, APARI member sponsored participants, which make, uh, uh, I could see from the different Southeast Asian country and Asian countries who have participated, from Pacific also they have participated. Because this tissue culture technology is more relevant uh, to the country in Asia and Africa. And Dr. Shukla had mentioned that a lot of participants from Africa, and we have the eminent panel, uh, panelists as well as Dr. Solomon as the speaker on the root and tuber crops. Uh, panelists from uh, uh, Dr. Wu from Taiwan, who has shared their experience. I think uh, I'm sure that everyone has been benefited and uh, learned across uh, the experience from the different panelists. And so with this, uh, I thank you one and all. And uh, if uh, Chair wants to say final word, then over to uh, Chair Dr. Ravi. Thank you, Dr. Rishi, and thank you, Dr. Shukla. I think, Dr. Rishi, you said it all. And I would only like to say very educative, very impressive, and please convey thanks from Apari to Dr. Purnima Sharma, Managing Director BCIL who remained busy last two, three hours, but we hope we will see her sometime in the future webinar. On behalf of Apari, Dr. Shukla, a big thank you to you, BCIL, Dr. Rishi Michaeli, each and every panelist and each and every speaker and participant. We are really happy to, to have this show with you all and we'll be having much more with time. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much, sir, for encouraging work. But do you have any provision for a group photo? Yes, we'll have. Oh, yeah. Because you are not talking about this, you closed it. No, we missed <laughs> this. So thanks for reminding, sir. Okay. I request all the speaker, panelists to switch on the video. Dr. Solomon. So all the panelists, they can, uh, we have a large number of participants, so all will not join friends, so, but panelists, they can. Jack, please also capture okay. some screenshot. Sure. Mr. Solomon. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it twice. First one, three, two, and a second. Let's do it again. Three, two. Okay, thank you. It's done. Thank you so much. Okay, bye bye till the next uh, webinar. In fact, uh, you may be knowing that each webinar requires the registration. To all participants, please note that each webinar requires separate registration. So, see you uh, next time in the next webinar on the uh, very important. Uh, Crops. Thank you so much. So, with the permission of Honorable Chair, sir, can we close it now? Please. Yeah. Thank you Thank all. You. Hope to Thank see you again. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Thank you for having me.